All right. So, um, a question that you know I get asked a lot is how to use practice mode. Like, what do I do in practice mode, and like how do I use it to kind of like improve my skill as opposed to just going in there and like doing whatever, right? People go in to practice mode, they have no idea what to do. They kind of just do stuff. They get bored. They leave. They go play online ranked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more to practice mode than how people like to use it, and you know what they what they do for it. They just go in there and like play the game or whatever. So I'm going to go over basically how I use practice mode to get to where I am right now, because I believe that at different skill levels there are different things to worry about in practice mode. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is like the the entry level which is controlling your character, right? Learning to use practice mode to gain control of your character, right? Learn all the basics of the game and like get comfortable with it, which is probably the most important thing. And then after that, I'm going to talk about using it to like, you know, train things with like, like your punishment, your, like your reactions and all that stuff. And then maybe make a section after that for, um, learning how to use it to like develop strategies and stuff. So, step one, of course, is learning to control your character, which you're not going to really need to know much about the actual mechanics of practice mode for, right? It's more so just using it um, and, like, you know, practicing your tech knowledge, like the things you learn in videos and stuff like that. So, when I was learning the game, the first thing I did was learn how to move, right? I learned how to do the back, you know, back dash cancel, how to sidestep, you know, and trying to make myself get comfortable with it rather than just being able to do it, right? Because most people will, they'll learn the backdash cancel input, they'll go into practice mode, they'll do it a couple times, and then they'll say, okay, I got that, time to play online or something. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think there's a lot more involved than, than that. Um, this level of comfort you want to have when moving your character around to play Tekken so that you can, like, think about doing something and just having it happen, right? You want to be able to think it's time to backdash and like you want to move backwards, so you just start backdash canceling. Or you want to like sidestep whenever you want, be able to cancel your sidesteps or your sidesteps into backdashes and vice versa. So <laughs> using practice mode, um, develop that skill, of course, you know, after you get the fundamental inputs down for it and stuff. I, well, let me switch the characters real quick. Chadi's not a good example for this. I would use a character like Lars. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically record some normal like poke sequences that you'll find when you're fighting against Lars. And I'm going to try to like um, move around them. So something like this, right? You go to repeat action, set your record slot, get Lars doing stuff like this. And learning to just like backdash against it, not get your backdash hit out of because you know you can move and back or move and block in this game and just being able to produce the backdash input immediately after getting attacked without like getting hit is something you're gonna want to train and like practice a lot because it will have it will help a lot in your gameplay to be able to do stuff like this or you know at the same time if you don't want to do dashes and you want to practice your side steps you set him to do this things like this and you can practice side stepping the moves and of course this seems simple like you know it's something straightforward but keeping up with it making sure that you're comfortable and getting it down to the point where you don't have to think about what you're doing as you do it is what your your goal is so you know do this when you're first learning the game learn your movement of course learn your combos learn your, your character's attacks and stuff if you don't know your character's attacks you know it's command list go to the command list learn the moves and just be comfortable thinking about doing something and then having it happen. And someone at the beginner stage, you know these move sequences, watch this video. I'm gonna be uploading this on YouTube. So, <clears throat> I get, most people call it the end of the beginner stage. I guess I can call it the end of the beginner phase. Um, the, well, I guess what would be intermediate, which I also kind of did at the same time when I was learning the game was learning to 
punish as a reaction and learning to throw wreck as a reaction. My whole idea was I should be able to take the the free damage, right? If Tekken is a game about earning the damage on your opponent, then when I get free damage, I should be able to get that from my opponent. And I shouldn't give my opponent any free damage on me. So learning to react to the guaranteed stuff, you know, your punishes um, on unsafe attacks and learning to not give your opponent free damage as far as throw breaks go, right? Because, you know, throws are basically just free damage if you can't break them. Those were the next two steps, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to start with punishment first. It's really easy to kind of learn how to punish things, you know, how to punish a character because of the fact that in Tekken, you know, your fastest move is 10 frames, double digits. When you're going through the frame data, you can look at any character's attacks and like kind of just pull out what's unsafe. Right, what's minus 10, what's minus 11, like what's minus 10 or more. And, you know, go through those, go through the frame data, get those moves out, and basically come out with whatever you, you know, whatever you get, minus whatever, I don't know, punish these. And then you set the, you set the CPU to do these moves, you know, do these moves a couple of times. You're not going to know um, the punish immediately. You're not going to be able to get like the, the optimum punishes immediately on reaction if you play a game of Tekken after doing this. But the point of doing this in practice mode is so that you know your options, right? It's it's a lot harder to look at frame data, go in a match, and then say, hey, I know these moves are unsafe. The moment I see them, I'm gonna do my perfect punish. It's not gonna happen. But <laughs> if you punish it in, if you punish it in practice mode a bit, you know, you go through every move on the you know on the command list and Punish it a couple times with your character's best punish. Um, it'll be more firm in your memory, and you won't, I guess, to set expectations correctly. You won't be punishing perfectly as soon as you go in a, a real match. Right? That's not what the practice mode is for. What it is for is to kind of associate your memory with the situation. You want to have the situation in your mind and know the move you have to punish it. And that way, when you go into a match and you see the move, you'll know what move you can you can counter it with. And of course, the first time you see it, you're not going to react. The second time you see it, you're probably not going to react. But it'll be on your mind, looking for that specific punish. And then the more you do it in a match, the the more it'll help you out. If you do that with any character. Um, after a while, uh, playing Tekken, you start to be able to switch through characters and get to their punishment a lot easier. But I, yeah, whatever character you're going to play, you're going to want to go through and you know learn to punish different things. And you're going to want to go through like basically the whole character select if you're trying to play Tekken seriously. So I went through like two characters every day before I like played online because that just made sense to me, right? I'm going to play the game and have fun anyway, but I'm going to practice a bit. So I would go through like like by alpha, alphabetical order. I just went through each character like, and I would punish each attack twice that was unsafe from them before I'd go and play online. And that way, as I see these characters online, and I know if I can punish if I can punish specific moves, and I'm playing against like some green rank, right, who's throwing them out because I'm also green rank at the time, then I can make myself punish it the next time, right? So you see a Lars player online who keeps spamming up or three. You know, you'll know you're punished. You won't react to it immediately, but you'll start to like look out for it. When you're playing, you want to sit down and go, next time he does an up 4 or 3, I'm going to hit him with my my hardest punish. And you do that. And if you do that a couple times in a game, it just kind of just starts to become a reaction. You'll start doing it without thinking about it. And that's kind of like how you want to train your reactions to things um, in general, is like, you know, practicing against it in practice mode, and then taking it to a real match and looking out specifically for it. Practice mode is not going to train your reactions to be perfect immediately, but it'll give you the tools to train your reactions. So, past the punishment, um, throw breaking is easy, right? You find a character that has all the command throws. If you don't want to use like a third party throw break trainer or something, you can go to like, like Jin, right?
You got a Jin. He has all the command throws. He's got the two throw. He's got a four one plus two. He's got a one throw. And <clears throat> for throw breaking, the key to like practicing throw breaking in, in practice mode and like training your reactions to be able to break these is not um how do you say you're not trying you're not worried about speed, right? You're because when you're when you're new, um yeah, everyone wants to like try to break the throws fast enough on reaction. Um what you actively want to focus on training is the association of the button with the animation. So when you're when you're focusing on doing a throw breaking, you don't want to think about speed at all. And even if you had to do it like super late, right? Like I'm talking, if you want to, if you want to go, okay, he did one throw right now. You want to make sure that you only hit the button that you know um, breaks the throw, based on what you're seeing. You want to look at the hands. You want to go through the process of like mentally going, that's a one throw, that's a two throw, that's a one plus two throw, and you want to make sure that your body responds with the correct button press. That's more important than the speed because the speed will happen naturally. The speed will the speed is kind of like um, a product of how good the training is, how good your association is with the animation. So when you're playing and if you and if you if you train your if you trained your body to go one when it sees the one button or the one throw, then eventually you'll just get fast enough to break it in time. So focus on accuracy over speed when going for like throw break training. And of course, you know, practice is a lot because it does take a while to get used to. You're not gonna be breaking throws like this immediately. Um, you're gonna be slow. You're gonna mess up a bit like that. I just messed up right there. You're going to miss some animations. You're gonna confuse the one plus two throw with the one throw, but after a while of failing and you know forcing yourself to slowly go for the right answer instead of trying to just rush it and press whatever your body will start to naturally react with the correct speed with the correct break and it'll help you out yeah. <laughs> so you know look closely at the hands go slow and be patient because it's gonna take a while i recommend listening to a podcast if you are a fan of like eris's podcast or something because it really does like make time go by really quickly. Like when I did that, I was listening to Ares' Tekken Six podcast and just in throw in practice mode, breaking throws all day. It was kind of fun. Okay, so we went over, learn to move, learn to punish, learn to throw break. Of course, um, it's gonna be a similar thing for like things you can react to. You know, people kind of get hit by like snake edges and stuff. Although. I didn't use practice mode too much for these things. I kind of just learned it while I was playing and like focus on them. Um, you can use you know the record feature to not be free to lo like slow lows, like lost dragon tail or something. And it's the same thing um, that I mentioned with the throw break training, right? Reactions in general are not about being able to like or focusing on going fast. Training your reactions is about training yourself to react to the animation. So you want to see the thing and you want to have your body like have a program response. So for this, so the same thing with like testing your reactions or for training your throw break reactions, you want to focus on being correct rather than being fast. And then in the moment, as you get better at, you know, being correct and you go a little bit faster, um, your body will start to react faster and you'll start to get those low blocks a lot easier. So basic reaction. Okay, so I guess people call that beginner intermediate. For me, I think that covers all of the beginner things. Um, learn to control your character, learn to punish, you know, not get the free damage, reactive things. Um, all right. So now we're gonna get into like the actual part of practice mode that you guys mostly see me doing. Um, let me let's go to symbols. Switch a character or something. 
the part that like I, I've streamed a lot, you know, you guys, you guys who have been around have seen me do a whole lot of this, you know, this kind of practice mode stuff is using practice mode to understand situations and options. Um, this is something that's like never going to stop. I think when you when you like learn how to play Tekken because you're always always going to be running into kind of like new new things, new strategies, new like people are going to come up with stuff. And <clears throat> Tekken is basically you know, at, the, at its simplest, a complex game of rock, paper, scissors, right? You want to know what your opponent is doing and you want to have the, the counter for it. And you want to be able to like produce counter for the things when you expect it to come, right? So knowing that you can sidestep left against like Jack's down back one or something like that um, helps a lot when you're actively fighting a Jack player and you're in that actual situation and you can like sidestep and launch it. When I was learning the game, after I did, after I had gotten to a point of like mastery with everything else I just mentioned, with the throw breaking, with the you know the reactions, with um, the movement, I would go online and I would play it defensively, and I would try to see how my opponents would break my defense, what options they were using, when I just like let them play the game, and like how how I would die to it. And, you know, they would, you know, of course everyone had different ideas of how that was done. Everyone would do different stuff. But of course, you know, a lot of people, low ranks and stuff, they'll go in, they'll try to hit you with a hell sweep or, you know, uh, some kind of mix up or whatever. And, of course, when you see, like, something like a hell sweep or something, you're going to immediately go, I can duck that. I can block that. I can launch that. But, you know, this of course you're getting you're eating the mix up and stuff. There is almost always multiple options to beat something in Tekken. And the reason for that is because every attack has some basic properties that it has you know, a hitbox, right? And, you know, so it has like a positioning on the screen. And the positioning on the screen means that like there are going to be situations where you can make it whiff, you know, by being out of range of it, or by stepping it entirely. It's, you know, it has, it's going to have a hit property. So if it's a high, you can like duck it. If it's a low, you can low parry it. Things like that. And then it's going to have like startup startup frames and uh, ending frame advantage or frame disadvantage. So there are going to be situations where you can counter it. There's going to be situations where you can block it and punish it, or there's going to be situations where you can like block it and take your turn after. And there's a lot more options than like you'll initially see when you're playing the game. And if you're losing to something and going, how do I beat it? You, you, the best thing to do is going to be to kind of come to practice mode and ask yourself based on those different attack properties that, that exist, like, what can I do about this move? Can I interrupt it? Can I step it? Can I backdash it? Can I just like block it, take my turn after? You're gonna want to be able to going to want to test all of these situations to kind of develop your your defense and your ability to counter things, and it it literally changes the way you play the game because you know the game is all about which which options you go to to counter different things. So what you're gonna be using this for this training mode for mostly after you get past the basic, uh, you know, reactions and control of your character, is to learn these options, learn what you can do against things, and how to beat them, and like develop your gameplay. Now, <clears throat> on the other side, you're not always defending in this game. You also, as a player, are going to have to understand how to play your character better, right? Learning the options your opponents have against the things you do with your character. And <laughs> something uh, simple, I, it's going to seem simple, I know, but a lot of the times people will kind of be upset because they can't, like, train against their own offense, but you, but you actually can because you can set the other character to do the thing to you, right? 
you can say, hey, what if Julia does a jab into a down four against me? You try to step it, doesn't work. You try to step this way, doesn't work, right? Or maybe like interrupt it with a launcher, get counter hit. This is information for you as a Julia player. You know that in this situation, if your opponent decides to try to sidestep, or if your opponent tries to try to interrupt with like a big launcher or something, it'll counter hit them. So when you're playing the game and you're, you know, going through that rock, paper, scissors game with your opponent, like I said, you know your options to kind of cover theirs. So this is something I do um, like a lot. With, when I, or I did a lot when I was playing Horang and trying to like develop a gameplay with them. Is going to practice mode and like practicing against my own things and learning how my my stuff gets blown up, learning how to you know beat the different options that kill me. So like let's say a Julia player discovers they can low parry that, right? Low parry is big damage for just a small low poke. It's kinda of scary. You can go to the other record slot, you know, decide, hey, does this hop kick reach as a as a mix up? It doesn't reach. So the hop kick isn't an option against that, right? It's not gonna it's not gonna work. You can practice again. Uh, come up with whatever you know, whatever you're gonna come up with, and now you know, like, if your opponent's low parrying, you got that. And um, I'm not—I didn't want to make this too long. I've been doing this for like 20 minutes already. That's crazy. I didn't realize how much time I, I had been talking. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, outside of that, <laughs> you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be strings and stuff uh, for you to learn to deal with. It's gonna be part of punishment, I think. Look, you're gonna play online. You're gonna see your opponents doing like different strings to you. They're gonna, you know, try to gimmick you out and stuff like that. You can put yourself in those. You can use practice mode to put yourself in those situations, and just try to understand what are my options here. Uh, what can I do if someone's doing this? And like, how do I beat it? Then you go back online. You mess them up.